If you've had a lumbar disc surgery, does that mean you'll have a fusion surgery in the future? More specifically, if you have a lower back discectomy surgery, does it mean you'll have a more significant fusion operation in the future? As a spinal surgeon, I know that is a possibility, but how frequently does it really happen? This is the best way I can answer that question. Do you have more than a 50% chance of having fusion operation after you've had a discectomy surgery? The answer is a definitive no. Before we get into the specifics, we do need to make sure everybody understands the difference between these two operations. Discectomy means removing the piece of disc from the back that's the source of pain. Most of the time, the reason you would have the surgery is because the disc component is pressing on the nerve and causing a very defined pain, numbness, and weakness pattern. Statistically, properly chosen patients who undergo discectomy surgery has about a 95% chance of success after the operation. Success being defined as a significant decrease in pain and the ability to return back to normal functions. Please note, there may still be some residual numbness and some pain, but the person is getting back to activities. Currently, there's about 450,000 lumbar discectomies being performed in the United States on an annual basis. A fusion surgery is different. Fusion means making the body think two separate bones are actually a broken bone, and then the body mends these two broken bones together. The reason fusions to the lower back are performed is because abnormal movements between the bones cause intermittent or constant irritation of the nerves near the bones. The medical term for this condition is instability. Instability can be caused by a congenital problem, degeneration, and even more serious conditions like broken bones, cancer, or infections. Fusions are much bigger operations and unfortunately not as predictable in their ability to return people back to full activities compared to a discectomy. Latest data indicates approximately 200,000 elective lumbar fusions being performed in the United States annually. If you take just the raw number, you can mistakenly think that anybody with a discectomy will have a moderate chance of having a fusion operation at a later date. But the numbers are misleading because many of the lumbar fusion operations are being performed by other diagnoses, such as scoliosis, spondylolisthesis, spinal stenosis, and more serious conditions including cancer and infection. In March 2019, a paper was published by Castillo et al. from the University of Chicago Medical Center. While it was a retrospective review, it followed approximately 200,000 discectomy patients to identify the rates these patients will have lumbar fusions compared to a matched group of patients with similar diagnosis who did not have any operation at all. While the patients with discectomy did have a higher rate of fusion overall compared to patients who've never had an operation, the actual percentage of patients with prior discectomies ending up having fusions after 10 years was still less than 9%. The author compared their data to other reports. Depending on the country of origin, the fusion rates could be significantly lower. A study from Finland had around 5%. There has been other studies following discectomy with fusion rates significantly less than 5%. The bottom line is the rate of fusion surgery after discectomy is not very high. Another factor that must be considered is the changing numbers of fusions that are being performed in the United States compared to the past. When comparing the data from 2004 to 2015, there hasn't been a 62% increase in the use of fusions in the United States. While there can be some changes related to the aging of the population, we cannot explain the significant increase in the use of this technique solely based on clinical outcomes. There has been enough population studies to show that despite increasing utilization of advanced spinal technologies and spinal operations, it has not resulted in any better clinical outcomes, return to work, return to function, 
or improved overall healthcare parameters. Costs have significantly gone up. Various entities have generated significant revenue from this trend, but the health of the U.S. population did not improve. It's no wonder the payers of these very expensive spinal fusion treatments are questioning their efficacy and justification. Sorry to digress and let's get back to the main point of the video. To summarize, while discectomy is a beneficial surgical treatment for the right patient, the concerns for needing a future spinal fusion should be taken into context of the statistics. From a large population standpoint, the chance of needing fusion surgery after lumbar discectomy is less than 10% over 10 years in the U.S. It's even less in other first world industrial nations. The low rate of additional fusions has also been my experience. The vast majority of my patients did well after discectomy, especially at the L5-S1 level. Fusion in my practice was limited to patients who had instability, secondary to spondylolisthesis, multiple recurrent disc herniations, or in the more serious conditions of infection, fracture, or tumor. If you're having discectomy surgery, while there is a potential for fusion at a later time, the risks are relatively small. But please have this discussion with your surgeon. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information about similar topics, please subscribe to our newsletter or to our YouTube channel. Thank you.